This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring Dallas Spruce high school coach Dwayne Crawford. In this episode, Coach Crawford speaks on the valuable lessons he learned as a young coach, details his personal experience working in athletic performance at the collegiate level, and highlights the importance of having a learning mindset. But first, a word from our sponsor. The Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Coach of the Year Award is the oldest award given by the American Football Coaches Association and embodies the nature of respect more than any other award in the game of football. Every coach who believes in the power of football to build better men knows the value of the game. Only a tiny minority of coaches can scale the heights to achieve true excellence. To make the climb, great coaches know they need help from a great team of players and assistant coaches. It's one of the primary reasons Werner Ladder signed on to sponsor the Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Coach of the Year Award in 2019. As a world leader in ladder manufacturing, Werner knows what it means to support a champion's climb to the top. Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Regional Coach of the Year voting opens November 15th and runs through December 3rd. Active AFCA members will receive an email from the AFCA offices with voting instructions the day voting opens. Once the five FBS regional winners are selected, those are the five finalists for National Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Coach of the Year, and that voting starts in the middle of December and ends the week prior to the 100th Annual AFCA Convention in San Antonio, Texas. For questions regarding Coach of the Year voting, please feel free to contact Vince Thompson at vince at afca.com. Coach Crawford, what's going on, my brother? Hey, what's this? Hey, Coach, how you doing today? Man, I'm good, man. I'm uh, excited to be on with you. And, uh, you know, it's always my pleasure whenever we get the opportunity to chop it up with each other, man. And, you know, just for anybody that's listening, I have a long-standing relationship with, with, with Coach Crawford. We were teammates at Baylor University and uh, really, really, really good friends throughout the coaching journey as we were both, uh, you know, moving around in, in different directions, taking advice from each other as we were on our journeys. And uh, it's just my pleasure now to be sitting in this seat and you sitting in a slightly uh-huh. different seat than what you were when I used to talk to you. But, uh, you know, just really want to dig into why did you – really why and when – did you decide you wanted to get into coaching? Well, I'll tell you what, Coach. Uh, you know, to be honest, it was something I kind of knew at a young age. Uh, my dad used to get on to me all the time about about coaching guys on the field. And um, anyway, so I kind of had it in me as a player, just understanding everybody's assignments and what, what was, you know, what was going on around me. So I kind of knew, you know, early on that uh, that coaching was something that, you know, I was I, I I could be passionate about, um, but I would say, you know, once I got into college and got around some guys, um, you know, and some great coaches, um, great teachers, guys like Coach McGriff, um, you know, Coach Hofer, guys like that, um, very passionate about the game. At the same time, um, you know, understood their players and uh, knew how to relate to them and get the best out of them. So those guys really, really were a big influences as, as to what you know to why. I end up, you know, actually pursuing it as a career. Awesome. Well, you, you obviously had a great playing career, all Big 12, this and that. And, uh, you know, just, just being a teammate of you and, and, and going to get your practice and all that stuff, you, I, I would always identify, number one, as a good athlete. I'm definitely not taking away from your athleticism, but just a high IQ guy. You know, you're always putting yourself in position to make plays. And it's just really ironic how, you know, some of the players that you, you play ball with or you see and they make those high IQ plays they they turn out to be really really good coaches just because they understand the game differently their success comes from you know yeah you were a safeties guy but you knew what the backers were doing where they fit and allow for you to just make make so many more plays and it's just relying on that athleticism and you were able to take that athleticism a high cue go play a little bit of a professional ball post Baylor and then uh you know when that when that came to conclusion uh, just tell me a little bit about the, the the process to get into coaching, getting that first gig at uh, at First Baptist Academy there in Dallas. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Coach, uh, you know, saying saying um, that you're done in the game of football is, is something that, that's that's hard to do. Right. Um, just being competitors and 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 you know us thinking that we can play this game, you know, um, at a high level for as long as you know we ultimately think we can, um, but. You know, um, there came a time, you know, where I understood that it was going to, you know, it was going to be, you know, what am I going to do life after football? And uh, like I said, it was there playing uh, in the IFL out in uh, Tri-Cities, Washington. Uh, and, 
and and an old teammate of ours, uh, Jason LeVorn, who's over at first, uh, like you said, First Baptist Academy, you know, reached out to me. You know, obviously I wasn't certified or anything like that. Um, so, but he had a, he had opportunity for me to come in at the private school um, to to help him out and uh, and get things going there. So, um, you know, it was a great it was a great opportunity. I, I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity, but. You know, he was the guy that, that, that started this deal up for me. He gave me my first chance, my first, like I said, opportunity to, uh, to lead young men and women, um, you know, and, and, and to be a great teacher, um, in, in, in the game. And, uh, and so starting there, you know, um, and, and, and then we kind of just took off from there, coach. The, the, that opportunity there, um, you know, you just, you're raw, you straight off the football field. What were some of the, the, you know, the things that you learned, had to learn quickly, uh, between being a player and being a coach, you know, mo- most people ha- kind of have that bridge where, you know, the, your GA, you know, so you don't have to immediately be impacting the people. You get to kind of come in and learn, but you pretty much were over, or I think receivers and DBs pretty fast. You know, what were some of the things that yes, you had to, what were some of the things you had to learn very quickly there? Uh, just how to run a room, you know, how, how to run a room, you know, um, you know, you, you saw it done you know, um, as a player, but now when you're, you know, thrust into that position, um, you got to figure it out on the fly, you know, how to, how to get, how to get everybody, you know, on the same accord, um, get guys moving in the same direction at the same time, every, everyone doesn't learn the same, you know, so learning how to, how to, how to manipulate it and get it, you know, and transition it to, to where this particular, you know, young man, um, knew what you were asking them to do. And so, uh, so that's, that's just something, you know, that, you know, you just learned on the fly. Um, but you, you went back and you thought about past experiences and times, you know, where you saw somebody in those situations and how they handle it. And so I look back at, like, guys, like I said, that I respected, you know, yeah. within the game. And um, and and then on top of that, just having, you know, having having a camaraderie and knowing people that were already in the profession that I respected, you know, being able to reach out to them, you know, as you know, you've been in, you've been in, 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 in the profession for a long time. That's always, you know, it's big. Right. Um, being able to reach out to, you know, guys that you respect, you know, guys that you look up to, mentors or things of that nature. Um, so being able to reach back out to them, you know, throw things off of them, listen to, you know, any feedback um, that they had to say and uh, and kind of just build my, build my own, you know, philosophy and way, you yeah. know, along that along that time. Yes. Yeah, well, you, you know what? You, you said something that I, I found pretty interesting and some similarities between both of our careers. Like we, we had the opportunity to get our own rooms. Uh, you know, early as you know, you were at the private school. I was spent a little time at the middle school, high school, and then I had a GA opportunity that was that, that had a, had its own position. Um, then we both had the opportunity to go play, be a Division One graduate assistant. How advantageous, because it was extremely advantageous for me, was it to have some experience where you you know you ran a show, you recruited, you did you know you did some of those type of things that the full time coaches do before you took a division one GA to where you actually step back, you don't have your own room, you know, you, you, you kind of, uh, a little bit more in the film room, things like that. How advantageous was it to have some of that experience, uh, before you actually GA at, at the division one level? I thought it was huge. You know, I, I really do. I think it was huge. Uh, you know, um, you know, got to the division one level before I got on the football side of things, like you talked about earlier, you know, I was a strength coach and, uh, you know, um, and, and being in athletic performance, um, you know, getting getting those group of men and you know I work with a lot of different teams um at the same time not just football but um just getting them you know um to 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 understand you know what 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 was entailed on the on a day-to-day basis um but learning from great great people um helped me when I got the opportunity to step in as myself and and and, and run a room you know and so um just being around great leader of men you know um you know, groomed me into into who I was. You know, when I I finally got the opportunity, right. and uh, and I'm I'm just thankful for for the guys and the group of guys that I was able to come across uh, paths with along the way that that instilled those things in me. Um, so when I was able to be thrust into the position, I was ready. Absolutely. Now you 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 brought up uh, the stop at Tulsa, and that that was really unique. And I, I think that's probably when me and yourself really start having more like weekly or monthly conversations just about what was going Correct. on in our careers. And we were talking quite a bit at that point in time. And one of the things I thought that was uh, really as a reflect back at the time, I was just trying to get my next job, you know, and uh, make sure I was doing a good <laughs> job. But as I sit back and reflect on that conversation, man, you were doing something that, that 
I think is 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 phenomenal. Uh, and you know, we do have a lot of young listeners to the po- on the podcast. I think some worth sharing. But you were the strength and conditioning coach, and you know, I, I would call you in, in in the middle of February, and you're like, man, hold on, man, I got I got the swim team in here. You know, you had some kind of team right. nothing to do with football. And then you know, you call me back and say, man, I was you know chopping it up with the D line coach over here, man. We were talking about this, that, or the other, and you know, uh, you know, he 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 had introduced me to this guy, and you were doing a ton of networking with the football staff in the midst of being a strength and conditioning coach and, and, and pouring yourself into that segment. Uh, you know, talk a little bit about why you found that to be so important and how that paid dividends for you, just that networking piece. I thought it was huge. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, I, I knew, you know, that I wanted to be a football coach, you know, but the opportunity was presented for me to, to, to you know, get into, you know, the, the college level as, as, as an athletic performance coach. Um, but like I said, and, and we had a great staff on the football side of, of things over there at Tulsa while I was there. You know, uh, we accomplished some great things. And uh, and some of those guys on the staff I looked up to, we thought highly of, you know, as I watched them practice and, and go through meetings and stuff like that. I just sat back and I just I just picked their brains at the same time, like you said, you know, create a rapport and, and, and a relationship with these guys, um, you know, that helped me um, take off on the football side of things. Uh, like you said, uh, Coach Thibodeau. Um, you know, Coach Press Taylor, who's now in the NFL, you know, um, just, just uh, the list goes on, you know, um, of guys that, that I was able to, to, uh, to, to network with, um, build relationships with. And ultimately they, they helped me get to, to my next stop, which was Wyoming. And, uh, and like you said, it was just through networking and, and, and building those relationships with those guys. Right. And, and I think anybody that has, uh, you know, been around strength and conditioning staff, it, honestly, at the high school or collegiate level, professional level as well, know how busy that day is for a strength and conditioning coach. How were you able to make time, or why was it important that you prioritize, prioritize uh, uh, time to go and speak with these guys, just to make sure that you're always networking with these guys? Why, you know, how did you do that? Yes, sir. I mean, well, to be honest, coach, um, those guys lived in the weight room. Uh, so during any off time, you know, they would come in and get 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 a lift in and stuff like that. And, and while they were in the weight room, I, you know, I would go out there and we would talk. Yeah. You know, we would talk and and and, and like I said, just build a relationship, talk a little ball, things like that. And before you know it, uh, you know, I, I find myself like I'm 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 like minded to these guys, you know. But those were the times, you know, to be honest, when those guys came over to lift, they got a little free time out of the office watch a film or whatever the case may be they they would come over to the to the weight room and lift or they would go into the gym next door and play a little basketball so I would go in there and we would we would go in there during our little our free time and uh and, and you know and, and just have some camaraderie with the staff as far as on the football side and I think that's that's what ultimately you know um and and, and how I gained those relationships is through the time that they came over and visited with us and then obviously once we went to the football field you know, I would always follow certain position groups around, you know, watch watch the coach, coaches, Indy, um, watch how things were ran on the football side of things, like I said, because ultimately I, I understood that, you know, I wanted to be, you know, on that side of the field. Right. Um, but my, my opportunity came in the weight room first. Good, man. Well, you know, you, you said earlier you, you took that opportunity, obviously some of that networking, kind of leverage that into a, a, a defensive back graduate assistantship with uh, Wyoming. And I know as you spend more and more time there, you end up gaining a lot of responsibility, a lot of respect, a lot of trust from that coaching staff. Just, you know, every, you know, a lot of coaches are going to have the opportunity to graduate assistant at different levels. And uh, every one of those GA positions look just a little bit different. But what were some of the things you do, you did to stand out and gain some of that recognition from those full-time coaches? I was just myself, coach. You know, more than anything. I was just myself, you know, um, you know, when I was at Tulsa, you know, I, I was I was known as a guy that had a lot of, lot of brought a lot of energy and passion, you know, to 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 the game, and uh, and I did the same thing, you know, um, when I when I got the opportunity to finally get on the football side of things at, at, at Wyoming, you know, each and every practice would bring a lot of you know energy, passion, um, just enthusiasm, um, and in 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 my work ethic, you know, just 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 from my background, uh, I'm just a hard worker, so. Um, when you love something, you know, it's, it's easy for you to do. And I love the game. I love being around, you know, um, you know, these young men each and every day. So it was just easy, easy for me to do. Um, it was an easy transition. But I, w- I would say, you know, that's what helped me. 
when I got there, that, that opportunity is, 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 is uh, it's just bringing it, you know, as, as the old coaches say, bringing that lunch bill every day. That's right. And, uh, and, and once you get, you know, a certain label is it, you know, you're the guy that's, that's very passionate or you're the guy that brings the energy every day. The kids look for that. So when you're not on, they know something's going on. So, um, so when you get that label, you got no days off. Right. And, uh, and so that's, that's, that's uh, what I, what I hang my hat on. Got to embrace that for sure, man. Well, you know, do, sure. do, do a year or so there in Wyoming, then you get the opportunity at Fort Lewis over in Colorado. You walk in as the DB coach, you spend a couple of years there, you walk out as the uh, defensive coordinator. Just uh, talk a little bit about that transition, uh, you know, in, 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 in real-time coaching. You know, you've coached DBs, uh, you know, <laughs> at, at a private school for a, a year or so, and then all of a sudden you're a strength and conditioning coach, and then you're a GA and then very quickly, you're, you're a defensive coordinator. So, honestly, like on the field coaching, you just didn't have that many years behind you. As, as you know, you look at other defensive coordinator re- resumes, right. you, know, you were young, young D.C. How did you prepare yourself so quickly, knowing what the D-line, you know, what was going on up front? You know, just all those intricacies. Like, you know, talk to us a little bit about that process, about sharpening your tools. I'll tell you, you know, when I got the opportunity to go over, uh, you know, over to Fort Lewis from Wyoming, um, you know, got a, got a chance, you know, took that job, you know, cause great coach there, uh, a fellow by the name of John L. Smith, old time legend in the game. And uh, I just thought it was a great guy to learn from. And, uh, at that level, and he gave me my, like I say, my first opportunity at a full time job, you know, as a young coach that only really been on, the, had been on the field one year right. as a GA. And, uh, so I was blessed with the opportunity and then got in there and, and, and worked with some great coaches, uh, defensive minded coaches. You know, on the on the on the defensive side of the ball, Ed Riffolato, uh, you know Joe Morris, who's now at Sam Houston State. Those guys, man, they, their their attention to detail, um, you know, their philosophy, um, you know, just how they taught the game to the guys. Um, I just I just I just fell right in place with those guys. You know, our, our philosophy, you know, we're in line, and and you know, we met as a staff, and, and we just we talked ball all day. That was that was a great thing about being at the college level. Um, you know, versus being at the high school level, I, I, guess, I guess, so to say now, is that, you know, your day, as you know, is all ball, all day. Right. And so it was just an opportunity to sit down in there. And, and through the spring, I would, you know, I knew the back end, you know, like the back of my hand. But I knew where I wanted to go with the game, and I wanted to continue to grow and learn. And so, you know, we were really good with what we did up front. And so uh, in the spring, you know, I, I would go in and, and, you know, I would have questions or I would ask coach to, you know, watch, you know, watch a cut up with me as far as our, our line stunts or something like that along those lines. But just, I just continue to try to grow each and every, you know, each and every day. And then uh, obviously in the off season, you know, just, just going out networking, things like that, going to different clinics and stuff. But, uh, but that's, that's, you know, you know, just being a young coach and not having a lot of experience. Uh, but, you know, staying in the film room, staying, you know, staying, asking good questions and things like that, I thought, you know, sped me up, you know, very knowledgeable of the game, you know, but obviously, you know, it, it, there's always room for growth. And uh, I just think, you know, um, through that time, just 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 picking those guys' brains uh, and, 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 and putting it in, in, into my portfolio um, helped me, you know, when I got the opportunity. All right, Coach. I want, I want I want to kind of transition there. Uh, you 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 take over the DC role. You guys have some success. You you put up some really good numbers defensively, and uh, you you have some personal aspirations. You got you, you know I, your background here. You got your young man. And, you know you got a family based back in Texas, and, and and you you sit down and you make a tough decision to kind of step away from the game for a little bit. And and, and you know, let's be blunt and be real here. Uh, obviously, I've had to, I had to have that conversation with myself. Although I'm still around the game a little bit, I had to you know take the whistle off, take the hat off, and uh, you know it was a very tough decision for me. Just you know, you don't have to talk about what exactly would you had to step away and do this, that, or other. But just talk a little bit about that decision. Where did who did you go to talk to about you know maybe stepping away from the game for a little bit? Uh, you know, what was a part of that decision making process? One of the hardest decisions of my life. Um, you know, um, to, 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 you know, be on a, on a fast track to, to, you know, um, accomplishing some of the things I set out to do, you know, when I got into this profession, um, at the same time, you know, um, it was, it was tough, you know, um, trying to do, do two things, you know, and one, you know, one thing in one state and another thing in another state, it's just, you know, just a lot of conflict, but, you know, I just talked to, you know, just talked to, you know, my mentors and guys I respected, you know, and, you know, ultimately, you know, my, my, you know, my ultimate goal was to, to be a head high school coach at the age of 40. 
And, uh, you know, those guys just told me, well, you know, things aren't going the way you, you know, you, you think or, you know, um, you know, hey, maybe start the journey a little earlier, you know. And so, so I decided, you know, to make the move back to Texas. And in the meantime, prior to, you know, jumping back in the, in, in the coaching the high school ball, I did start the business. And, uh, and so it's been good. But like you said earlier, I was missing the game. And, uh, and so I, you know, had the opportunity to finally, you know, um, get back in the game and, you know, obtain my teaching certificate, you know, and so, you know, here I am, you know, uh, you know, back, back doing what I love to do. <laughs> yeah. So with a little time off, uh, you know, in that time, when I say off, you know, just sitting at home with your feet crossed up on the couch or anything like that, you're, uh-huh. you, you got a business going. I know you do some, uh, <laughs> some of the real country stuff for you guys that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, follow him on Snapchat. He'll show you some horses and the cows and all that kind of stuff. But you know, you you you're doing yes, some sir. of this work. You got a young, uh, you got you got your son. Uh, is introduced to the world over the last few years. How, did how did you stay sharp on football? Because you walked right in. Your defense coordinator, Dallas Spruce. Uh, how, how did you stay sharp? I tell you what, uh, you know, one of the one of the one of the, one of the ways I stay sharp and, I, and just stay close to the game is you know I picked up training here. Mm-hmm. So I do a lot of skill training uh, with, with, with DBs and linebackers all over the Metroplex. And uh, so that was an opportunity for me to, to, to stay around the game, especially on the back end, and, uh, and continue to, to grow um, and, and develop young men and develop myself as a coach. Um, but at the same time, I would think, I would say, you know, uh, you know jo- joining a lot of the Zooms and, and these different clinics that were offered, you know, over the last year, year and a half or so since the pandemic right. and, uh, and, 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 and sitting and listening to guys just talk ball, just talk ball. And, uh, you know, I watch, I, that's all I watch on TV is ball. So, um, you know, just, but I would say that, that was, that was, that was my way of continuing to stay sharp and, uh, and stay close to the game. Obviously popping in some old film and, uh, and kind of, you know, doing a little self scouting, you know, seeing, yeah. seeing, uh, seeing some things that, that, uh, that you might like, you know, might want to change, you know, after listening to some guys talk about some, some different ways and how they ex- execute and do different things, you know, defensively. So I would say, you know, to the clinics and, 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 and the Zoom, the Zoom meetings that, that were offered, you know, over the last year and a half or so have been big for me and, uh, continue to, to, uh, to grow. At the same time, you know, and check some things and see how I was doing things and if I want to do it a different way. Right. Well, Coach, I know uh, yeah, what it's like to be at the high school level. You got you got classes going. <laughs> you got to train the condition you're responsible for. You got to practice after school, before school. You got, you got games to prepare for. So I'm not going to eat up any more of your time. I sure appreciate you taking some time in the middle of the season to sit down and chat with us for a little bit. Best of luck the rest of the way and look forward to seeing you in San Antonio for the convention. All right, Coach. Hey, I appreciate the time and the opportunity. Yeah, no doubt, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at AFCA.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at We Are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, Be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.